I'm going to show you how to answer this question without having to make a schedule. First, you need to understand what is being asked. Okay. So merchandise inventory were destroyed and by fire and you're trying to find how much was the inventory, the worth of the inventory that were destroyed. How much did you buy the inventory? Okay. So you want to know how many inventory were there in the storehouse. Okay. And if you sell any, then that means you will subtract how much you sold. Okay. So for instance, if you had inventory, you had 100 inventories. If you had 100 inventories in your storehouse and you sold 50, okay. So you sold 50 of them before the fire. So how many were destroyed by the fire? Or how much, what is the worth of the inventory that was destroyed by the fire? That was 50. So that is what we are trying to find, okay? And then this price is called cost of goods sold, okay? Because we know that whenever we sell anything, we have to report the cost of goods sold. So we have our cost of goods sold, and then that gives us our gross profit. Okay, so the cost of goods sold is the cost of the inventory, how much you bought the inventory that you are selling. Okay, and when we go back here, the method is called gross profit method. Okay, gross profit method. We use gross profit method because you, we use the percentage of the gross profit to find how much was the cost of goods sold we saw. Okay. So sales is always 100%, okay? And if gross profit is 36%, okay, we know this plus this should equal to the 100%, okay? Our cost of goods sold plus our gross profit should give us the 100% of sales. So if this is 36%, then that means our cost of goods sold was 64%. Okay, so whatever we sold here, the sales price is different, but whatever we sold, the worth of the actual inventory was 64% of everything we sold. So we're going to find that and then subtract it from everything we had from the beginning, okay? So moving on, we will find our merchandise available. But first we need to find um, merchandise, beginning merchandise. Okay, so what was our beginning merchandise when we started? So we started in uh, January 1st, that was 500,000. So we had 500,000 beginning merchandise. Okay. We had that 500,000 and then did we buy any or did we not buy? Okay, we bought from January to December, we purchased 4 million and 280,000, okay? So that is an increase in the merchandise. So we have the purchase as 4,280,000, okay? Now, we will add these two together to give us the total merchandise available, okay? So these were the total merchandise for the year. Everything we had for the year was this. But we sold some of them. We sold um, six million five hundred thousand. Okay. Now, as we mentioned, if we sold we saw these are our sales, we sold six million five hundred thousand. We want to find the worth of the cost of goods sold. Okay. And we have been giving up gross profit was uh, 36%. So that means cost of goods sold is 64%. Okay, so 64% of that was the worth of the goods we sold. So that is what we're going to do here in order to get our cost of goods sold, okay. So 
we will press equal to and how much was our sale let's just do something on the side how much was our sale was six five hundred thousand okay and what is the percentage of that of our cost of goods sold? should be 64 percent okay so we have a 64 percent here so we will multiply this 64 percent by six million five hundred thousand okay so that was our cost of goods sold so we subtract our cost of goods sold from that so that means we have this inventory and we saw this much inventory so how much inventory was there when the fire you know destroyed everything that was the what we had minus what we sold so 620 inventory were destroyed by fire okay there's another schedule okay that you i'm showing you how to do it without having to use a schedule okay but in the next exercise I will do what I will use the schedule so you will know also in case you prefer using the schedule. Okay. But you doing this is faster for me. Okay. It's very quick. You just find your cost of goods and you subtract from your total inventory and then you just you just find the difference and that is how much was destroyed by the fire. Okay. In this exercise, we have we have to uh, use retail method and gross profit method. Okay. Because this was a gross profit method, I will start with the gross profit method first. Okay? And I will show you later um, the retail method. Okay, So we have our gross profit method. I have read the problem, so I know what it is. But um, this number two is a gross profit method. Estimate the cost missionaries for this company. We're using the gross profit. Okay, And then number one was the retail method. So I'm going to do number two first, which is the gross profit method first. Okay. And then I move on to number one. Okay. So let's go to do number two with a gross profit using the schedule. So first, you always have to find merchandise available. Okay. So in order to find merchandise available, you need to find the beginning merchandise and then see if you bought anything or you didn't buy anything, okay? So merchandise available, that was July 1st was 280,000. So we had 280,000 of merchandise beginning. We, so we are doing this company, remember? This is the company that we are computing those things for because it says here for lemons okay lemons company okay great so we had beginning inventory did we buy any okay did we buy anything yes we have a net purchase of uh, three and a four million okay so we're going to put three and a four million there And then what is the merchandise, total merchandise available for sales? Okay, so we add these two together that gives us a total merchandise available for sales. Now, just like we did here, we want to find our sales because we want to subtract the cost of goods sold from them. Here, we just went straight forward to find our cost of goods sold. But in the schedule, you will find your gross profit and then subtract it from the sales and then the remaining is cost of goods sold. That's what it is in the schedule. So the schedule is kind of a longer way of doing it. Okay. So we need to find our sales. How much sales did we have? Five million three hundred thousand. Okay. So those were our sales. Good. Now notice here that we have sales allowance, sales return and allowance. That decreases our sales because if someone buys something and returns it we're not gonna consider it as sales anymore, whether the thing is as destroyed or it's not worth it, okay? So we're not gonna count it as sales. So we have to decrease that from our total sales. So sales returns and allowance was 100,000, okay? And then we will do our net sales, okay? So we we'll take, or you can do this, okay? And then you just add those two together and then you have five two hundred thousand okay. that is our net sales now we are going to find our 
gross profit and subtract it from the sales and the remaining is cost of goods sold. Okay, so exactly what we did here, but this way we have to find the cost of gross profit first. Here, I didn't care about the gross profit. I just went straight forward and find the cost of goods sold. I only need the percentage to find the cost of goods sold. But here, you have to find your gross uh, gross profit and then subtract it. Remember, gross profit is 35%. Okay, so 35% of sales multiplied by this one. So we will have this multiplied by 0.35. Okay, so that is our cost of uh, uh, gross profit. So the difference between this and that will be our cost of goods sold. Okay, the difference. So this minus this will give us our cost of goods sold. So we take this minus that. So our cost of goods sold was 300, uh, 3, 380, Okay, so we subtract that from our total inventory and that will give us how much was destroyed by the fire. So we take this, that means 300,000 were destroyed by the fire. Okay. Good. Now we have a second one, second exercise. So that was A, okay. And B, we need to do something for B as well. To assume that Lemos company took a physical inventory, okay, on September. 30 and discovered that 269750 of merchandise were on hand. Okay, 269 merchandise were on hand. So after the fire and everything, okay, assuming that we had 300,000 and then you went there and you count and this was what it was, okay. Instead of 300,000, it was 269750. So how many? Were, were stolen, okay? So this is pretty simple, this is straightforward. You, already, you probably already know what we're supposed to do, but we're supposed to have an estimated one here, okay? That's our estimate. And then how much was stolen, okay? And how much was stolen is 269750, okay? So we just subtract this minus this, and then we have how much was stolen by the fire. Okay, how much was left? So how much we had minus how much was left will give us how much was stolen or damaged, okay? Or whoever stole it, because employees can steal. Okay, good. So let's move on to the retail method. Okay, so we use the gross profit method. Now we're going to use the retail method. The retail method is a little bit different, okay? Because you will have to have uh, your cost for the, uh, the amount for cost and the amount for retail, okay? So we have here this company, okay? We're doing the first company, the one we didn't do previously. So we have this company over here, that's what we're doing. Okay, so now here, you have just have to put information in the beginning merchandise image. You always start from with the beginning. Okay. So we will have a beginning as what how much is the cost for beginning? 130,000. Okay. What is the cost for retail? 185,000. Okay. And then we did we have a purchase? Yes. So we have a net purchase of 1382 and 1975. So put that information there. Um, one three eight two thousand. Need to observe this. Okay, and then one nine seven five thousand. Okay, now what is merchandise available for this and merchandise available for that? Okay, so we add those two together, and then we can just drag it and then need to compute that one also for us. So we have this and that. Okay. Now, we need to find how much we sold, okay? Um, we need to find how much we sold, but before we do that, we need to find the ratio of cost to retail price, okay? The ratio of cost to retail price. So we are using retail price, so we need to find the ratio of this cost to the retail price. So what is the percentage of that? Okay, that's why we would take 
this one divided by that, and then that will give us 7, which is 70%, okay? So the ratio is 70%, okay? That's why the ratio of cost to retail, okay? That's what we have, so 70%. And now we're going to use the 70% to calculate uh, 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 problem here, okay? So how much was the sales? So we have a sale of uh, 1950 here, one nine fifty thousand, so one nine fifty thousand. Okay, one nine fifty thousand. Okay, and then return allowance always subtract allowance, so the allowance was forty thousand. So we had forty thousand. Okay, and then this manner that will give us our net sales. Okay, so we add these two together. And we have our net sale of one nine ten hundred. Okay, that is our net sales. Now, what else do we need to do? Okay. Now, this is our net sale. So we subtract the retail. We we'll take this one and subtract this one from it because that's the retail to give us a merchandise inventory. Okay. So we we'll take this minus that, and then we have our merchandise inventory of 250,000. And now we are going to use the percentage we have here, the 70% of this one will give us the merchandise at estimated at cost, okay? So we're going to use the 70% by this one, okay? That's what we found the 70% over there. So what we do is we take our 70% here, multiply by this, and that gives us a merchandise inventory at estimated cost. So that is the cost of our merchandise inventory using the retail method, okay? So it's kind of a schedule that you have to follow in order to do that. And then always remember that this cost divided by that will give you the cost to retail price, okay? Now, moving on, we have what, uh, we always love to do, many people love to do, because it's kind of very easy. It looks easy and it's easy as well. So it's a lower, lower of cost or market inventory. So your inventory that you have, okay, which one is the lowest? Okay, is it the cost, how much you bought it, or is it the market price that is lowest? So you're just using these two, though you were just choosing the lowest to assign a cost to your inventory that is left. Okay, so we have a table here, information here. So you just need to do the same table. So you have your commodity, you have your inventory, you have your unit cost per price, and then you have your unit market per price. Remember, we are comparing these two guys over here. We are comparing this one, cost price with the market price, okay? So we are choosing the lower one, okay? So between this, we're comparing this and that, which one is lower? And then we choose, that's, that's where the name comes from, lower of cost or market inventory, okay? And then we assign that cost to our inventory that is left, okay? So let's begin with AL65. So we have an inventory called AL65. 65, okay, so this is as well. How many inventory do we, do we have? We have 40 of them, okay. What is the unit cost price? It's 28. What is the market cost price? The market is 30, okay. So now you are finding the total of the cost. So you take the number of units multiplied by the cost. Remember, this is cost, so multiply by the cost and that gives you, okay, multiply by the cost, okay, and then you have your 1120, so the total for the cost, okay, so this one, you, the inventory is going to be the same by the unit cost with this, and then when you're doing market, you take the inventory, multiply by the unit market, okay, and you press enter, that gives you 1200. So be between this and that, which one is lower? We know, uh, the cost is lower, okay? So the cost here is lower. I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel where you will not have to type in numbers anymore. Okay, you just drag it all the way and then the Excel does the computation for you. So you press enter, 
and you type in minimum, okay? So minimum, okay, M-I-N, and you open parenthesis and you select these two, okay? And you close the parenthesis, all right? And then you press enter. Okay, so it selects the lower one for you. This is the lower one. So whenever you do the next one, you just drag it and it select the lower one for you. Okay, so let's see if that works. So we have here CA22. And this will save you so much time on the test. Okay, CA22, so you have 50 units here. Okay, what are the costs for units price cost? Okay, that was 70. And then how much is a market price? That was 65. Okay, remember, we already have this. Okay, so you drag this down and then it compute it for you. Compute this one and that one. Okay, compute only the cost. And you drag this one down, it computes uh, the market price for you. Okay, and then you drag this the one down and it gives you the lower one. Okay, which one is the lower? That's the market one. Okay, so you don't need to type in anything here. You just drag it and then it compute for you the remaining ones. Okay. Now we have LA98. So you're going to do what we do. That's awesome. 1110. And then that is six. Okay, unit price is six. And then market price is five. Okay. So I'm going to drag it again. You can just double click here. You double click here and then you compete for you. This is the lower one. Okay, you can tell that's everything for you. Okay. So the next one is SC. 16 okay how much how many inventory 30 how much is unit cost 40 and then how about uh, market cost that is 30 okay so we go here again we double click and then we double click here then we double click here and it select the lower one for us okay we have ut ut 28 okay and UT is 75 right here, 75 inventory. Cost price is 60, and then market price is 62. Okay, and Excel does it because Excel has been following the trend and it knows that that's what you want to do. So it just selected for you. Okay, now we have to find the total here. We have our total. Okay, so with the total, what is the total for cost? So we add everything up here. So that gives us a total for call 10980. And then I will just drag it all the way. Okay. And it gives me the total for market and then a total for LCM. So this is the worth of my LCM. So that is simple. If you put in the formulas for Excel to do the rest for you, you don't need to do anything here anymore except the first one and the rest. Remember to type in minimum. Okay, and select the two. You type in minimum and select the two, and that Excel select which one is lower for you all the time. Okay, so now let's do something fun as well. Okay, this is um, FIFO. Okay, student loves to do this. Okay, so we have begin inventory purchase and sales data for a DVD players as follows. Okay, we are going to use FIFO to determine the merchandise sold and in the inventory. So I have the table already set up here, okay? And then what I'm going to show you is always remember, so I colored it so it will look different, so you, you can see that. Always remember, so when you purchase, when you purchase, inventory is coming in. So everything here, from here to here with the purchase, inventory is coming in. When you sold, inventory is going out. And first in, first out, which is the FIFO. FIFO, just a reminder, FIFO means what we bought first, we will sell first, okay? So we have a basket, so we have basket number one, basket one, we bought it first, and basket two, okay, we bought it second. If we are selling and someone comes and want to buy any of our inventory, we'll go to basket one first, okay? and select it. If basket one runs out before we can come to basket two. So we always start with the first one, first in, first out. So whatever comes in first into our basket will go out first, okay. So we are going to go ahead and compute these ones. 
what do we have here? So we always begin with a first basket. So because this one is inventory beginning, it's always the first basket, basket okay? So the beginning inventory is always the first one. So on June 1st, we had um, 75 units. So you put the 75 unit here, and then what is the cost? The cost was $40, okay? So the total will be this multiplied by the $75, okay? That is our total for <clears throat> our merchandise inventory at the beginning, okay? And then on June 6th, okay, June 6th, we sold 60 units, remember? So this out goes here, okay. Merchandise sold. So we sold 60 unit. Okay. So we will do a 60 unit. We have a 60 unit here. And which basket are we taking them from? We only have one basket. Okay. So this one basket. So we are taking it from this basket. Okay. And we have enough to take it from. So the, the cost will be the $40. And then we multiply this too. So that is our cost of goods sold for June 6th, okay? Now, let's go to June 14, we purchase. Remember, it's coming in. Let me put this one here, okay? So June, June 14 is coming in. So in will be here, okay? So how many units are coming in? 90 units, okay? How much is each worth? $42. Now we will multiply this by the $90. Okay. So we have to do it on the next line because we sold something here already. That's on June 6th. Okay. I didn't see that coming. Okay, so we already have the June 6th. So we go to the next one. Okay, we don't do it next to it. So the next one, June. 14 purchase, so we actually do the purchase here. So we have 90, and then how much is the cost? The cost is $42, okay? So we multiply this by that, okay? Then we have 37.80, okay? Now, we need to do the remaining inventory here as well, okay? So when we sold this, how much was remaining, okay? So we have 75 minus 60, then we have 15 remaining and then the cost is 40. So we multiply this by that. That is how much remaining, 600, okay. And on June 4, we, we purchased 90, okay. So we're going to bring our basket down. Remember, I'm going to bring this basket down. Okay, so before we bought this, we already have this, okay. And we're going to add this basket that we sold or we bought to this one. Okay, so remember this part, okay, whatever goes here increases here. Whatever goes here decreases here, okay? Good, so because we have it here, it's going to increase this, okay? So that is our total. So total we have, I think, 105 units, and then this is the total cost. Okay, great. Now, on June 19th, what happened? We sold, okay, we sold 50 units on June 19th. So we'll go to the next line. Okay, remember, sold comes here, okay? It says we sold 50, but because this is a, remember, first in, first out. So we are going to the first basket first. We need 50 units, but how many units are there? Only 15, okay? So that means we're going to sell all the 15 units, okay? And I'm going to highlight this red, so you will know that we have sold everything, okay? So that means everything is gone here. This basket is gone, we just sold it here. But we need 50 units, okay? How many units do we need? How many more units do we need? We need 35 to make it 50 units, okay? So we will take the 35 from this 90. And what is the worth of the 90, that basket, $42. So we go to $42 and then we take this, multiply by that, and that gives us, um, these two, okay? So we sold 15 units from this basket and we sold 35 units from the 90 basket because this one was the first in was finished, okay? Now, what is our ending inventory? What's the balance? Remember, we sold this, okay? Since we sold this, this is remaining, okay? So we just, okay, we sold this, this is remaining, but how many did we sell from this? We sold 35, so how many is remaining out of that? So 90 
minus 35. So we have 55 remaining. But what is uh, each unit cost? That is 42. So we multiply this by that, and that gives us our total remaining. So that is our balance, okay? And then on June 25th, we sold 20 units, okay? So June 25th, we sold 20. Remember, this is increasing and this is selling, okay? So 20 units. We go to our basket. Do we have enough? Yes, we have enough. So we will sell the 20 units. What is the cost? It's 42. And then we multiply this by that, okay? And then we have this, the cost, okay? So once we sold it, okay, this portion is decreasing it. Okay, so we had 55 and we sold 20. So how many is remaining? 35 is remaining. But how much is each cost? $42. And then we multiply this by that and that gives us $14.70. So this is our inventory remaining. Okay, good. On June 30th, what did we do? We purchased 80 units. Okay. So remember, purchasing goes here, increasing. Okay, so 80 units. How much is each cost? $45, okay? So we multiply this by that, and then we have the total. Okay, so we have, <clears throat> we have the total here, and then we are going to add it to what we already have, okay? So we have this, we'll bring that basket down, okay? And then we add these ones to it. Just copy and paste and then tell it. Now, at the end of June, okay, at the end of June, how many units do you have? Okay, that is where you do the balance, okay? So you should have your balance, okay? So at the end of June, how many units do you do have? We have 105, 15 units. We've got 35 plus 81 and 15. What is the total cost for these two? That's 50, 70. And you also want to know your cost of goods. So in case you want, you are doing your income statement, okay? So everything here is your cost of goods. So your cost of goods will be five, three, 10. Okay, so that's how you do the five for one, okay? Let's move on to LIFO. So I still have the table schedule set up already. Okay, so LIFO. Remember with FIFO, what comes in first goes out first. With LIFO is opposite. Okay, so we like for in case we have a basket one, basket two. If someone comes, we'll go to the latest basket. This is the first, second basket, so we'll go to it. If it wasn't enough before, we'll go back to the previous one. Okay, so that is what LIFO is. Okay, so let, let's go ahead. We'll use the same data to find the LIFO for this company. Okay, so I'm going to put it next to it the same information, okay. So on June 1st, the beginning inventory will be the same. Okay, the beginning inventory is going to be the same because we have the same thing. Okay, that was on June 1st, okay. How many inventory did we have? We have 70, what is the cost of the inventory? $40. And then what is the total? This multiplied by that, then we have a total. On June 6th, we sold, okay, because we are selling, it's going to come here. So how many units did we sell? We sell 60 units, okay, this one, this is the only, uh, what do you call it, inventory we have. So we know we have in, uh, enough to sell, okay, so 70. And then the cost applied to it is 40, and then we multiply these two, okay. So now that we sold this, how many is remaining? Okay, so we have the 75 minus 60. So we have 15 remaining. And what is the cost assigned to it? It's 40. So we multiply this two. Okay, so we have 600 remaining. Okay, now on June 14, we purchased 90 units. So June 14, we purchased 90, it goes here. So we have our 90 units. Okay, how much is the cost per each? $42. So we multiply these two to have a total. Okay, so we're going to bring the remaining one down. So we bring this basket down and then we take this basket and we add it out. Okay, remember this portion increases it. Whether it's LIFO or FIFO, this portion increases it and this portion decreases it. <clears throat> okay, 
so now we go to June 19, we sold 50 units. Okay. So June 19, we're going to sell 50 units. We need to sell 50 units. Okay, great. Now let's go to our last basket, the latest basket. So this is the latest basket. With five four, we begin with the first basket. But with life four, we are going to begin with the latest basket. Okay. So we go to the latest basket. Do we have enough to sell it? Yes, it's 90 and we have 50. We have to sell only 50. So we had enough to sell, so 50. And then the cost is 42 because we are selling from this portion. So we multiply these two and then we have the total. Now, did we touch this? No, we didn't. So we're going to bring it here. It's still there, okay? Did we touch this? Yes, we did. Okay, so we're going to subtract how many we sold. We sold 50. So 40 remaining, and what is the cost? $42 each, and then we multiply these two by that, and then we have our total here. Okay. Now, on June 25th, we sold 20 units. Okay, so June 25th, selling will go here. Okay, so we go to our last basket. Do we have enough to sell? Yes. So we are not even going to touch that until the last basket finishes. So we have 40, so we have enough to sell because we're only selling 20, so 20. And what is the cost? The cost is 42. And then we multiply this by that. That gives us the total. Okay. Now, did we touch it? We didn't. So we're going to bring this one down here because that basket is still there. And then did we touch it? Yes, we did. So we're going to take out how many we sold. So we sold 20 units. So 20 units remaining. And what is the cost? The cost is 42. And then we multiply this by that. That gives us a total inventory. Okay. That's what remaining. Okay. Great. Now, we purchased, it says on July 30th, we purchased 80 units, okay? So we have July 30th here. And we purchased 80 units. Purchases goes here, okay? So we have 80 units. What is the cost? The cost is $45, okay? So we take um, this, multiply by that, to give us our total. Okay, good. Now we're bringing all the baskets we didn't touch. So we didn't touch any of this yet, okay? That's the remaining. So we're going to bring them down here, okay? So we have them here. Now we're going to add this one to them, okay? Remember, this portion increases it. So we have this one, and then we add them up, okay? So now, this is our total inventory. So if you want to know how many inventory you have at the end, which is your balance, so we have our balance here at the end of June, okay? We will do what we did previously. We will add the remaining one for the, at the end of the, what do we call the June, at the end of the period. So you remember, we still have 115 unit because we sold the same unit. It's that the same unit is left, okay? So we have the same unit, but the cost should be different, okay? So we'll take the last remaining cost, that gives us 50, 40, remember? The cost here is 5070, but the cost here is 5040. And you want to find your cost of goods sold. Okay, so you add everything up here, and that gives you your cost of goods sold. Great. Awesome. So that is it for LIFO and FIFO. Okay, let's move on to this one. Okay. So um, with this one, it looks like a FIFO and LIFO as well. But this one, Let's see what we are trying to do. Okay, so we have the beginning inventory here. We have the first purchase, that's basket one, second purchase, basket two, third purchase, basket three. Okay, and we are going to answer them based on this is the first in, first out, last in, B is last in, and average. Okay, so we're going to determine so how many units is left so that we are told that 15 units is left. Okay, we are going to see what, what is the worth of the 15 units that is left. If we are using FIFO, okay, if we are using FIFO, that means we sold this because first in, first out, we sold this one, we sold this one, okay, and then remember 15 units, that means we didn't touch this because we are starting from the bottom, okay, that means we didn't touch this, and this one, because this one is 10, and then five is remaining here, okay. That's what we're going to do, okay. So we know we didn't touch the third basket. So we have the third basket. We didn't touch the third basket. And what is the word? It's 10 units multiplied by $85, okay.
10 unit multiplied by 85 dollars and then the second basket in the second basket we only didn't touch five so we're going to take five multiply by how much is each worth 80 dollars okay multiply by 80 dollars and then we're going to add these two together Okay, and then multiply, multiply by $80. Okay, so we'll add those two together and that is our balance. Okay. So that is our balance because this one is remaining. We didn't, it's FIFO, so we didn't touch this at all. Okay, so again, so that is it for using FIFO. Now, how about using LIFO? Okay, so the B is using LIFO. So remember, if it's life food, that means we're selling from the bottom. So you go up. So that means we didn't touch the first one. Okay. So the first basket, the beginning basket, we didn't touch. So I'm going to do beginning basket. We didn't touch the beginning basket because it's life food. Okay. So beginning basket, how many is how many is in? That is six. Okay. So we have six multiplied by 70 multiply by $70, that's 420, okay. And now we need 15, remember we need 15 units. So how many is left? If we have six here, that means we should have nine here. Okay, we should have nine here remaining that we didn't touch, okay. So with this first basket, first basket, we should have nine here. So we have nine, Multiply by how much is each worth? 75. Why is my multiplication not working today? Okay, multiply by 75. Okay, that gives us the, and then we sum these two together. So the balance is 1095. That is our balance. Okay, so that is it for when we use first, uh, last in, last, first out. Okay, do the C. We need to find C, this one, average cost. Okay, so to find average cost, you need to find your total cost divided by total unit. Okay, so this is how you find average cost. So average cost, <clears throat> you need to find your total cost divided by total unit. Okay. So now we are going to do that. What is our total cost? Okay, what is our total cost? So our total cost will be everything here. Okay, everything here. Okay, so we will have, we will open parenthesis, six multiplied by 70. And then you close parenthesis, okay? So that's the total cost for basket, uh, the beginning total cost for, um, First basket, second basket, third basket, you're doing each one. Plus, you open parenthesis. The total cost for this 10 multiplied by 75. You close parenthesis, plus 80 multiplied by 80. You close parenthesis. Let me open this parenthesis. Okay, that's, that was 10 units. Okay, plus, oh, that wasn't 10 units. That was 18 units. Okay, you have to be careful with that. 18 units. You open parenthesis and then plus 10 units multiply by 85. Okay, so that is your total um, inventory cost. Okay, now you are going to find your total units. How many units? Okay, we know we have six units plus 10 units plus 18 units plus 10 units, okay, that is 44 units. Okay, so we divide this one by that, that's, we find the average. So average is 70. So each unit on average is 78.64. Okay, so how many units is remaining? We are told 15 units is remaining. So we just take this and multiply by the 15 units, and that is the worth of the inventory that is left. 
Okay. <clears throat> That's the inventory remaining. Okay, good. That's how you find your inventory one. Let's move on to this last two. This is what we call closing. So we are going to do, yeah, it's closing inventory. Remember, I will remind you here in case you have forgotten. So closing, we start, we do what we call read. Okay, so read is revenue and we close it to income summary. Expenses, we close it to income summary. And then we close the income summary to capital. And we close drawing to capital. So look at what you are closing, okay? If you are closing revenue, if you are closing revenue, ask yourself, what is the normal uh, uh, entry for revenue? Is credit. And because we are closing it, we are going to debit it. And then the credit will, goes, will go against income summary. What's the normal balance or the normal entry for expenses? It's debit. If we are closing, we're going to credit it. And then the, the opposite side goes against income summary. So this is, that's how we're going to do it, okay? So let's go ahead and do this Q thing here. Okay, <clears throat> so I already have the income summary thing set up. Okay. So we are going to start with our revenue. We close revenues first all the time. Okay. So revenue, how much is our revenue? That's the fees in, okay, 700,000. Okay, so we close it to income summary, okay. Because our fees end is a credit, we're going to debit it to close it here. So how much is this? 700,000, okay. And then we reference that to income summary. And then we have it right there, okay. Now let's close our expenses, okay. Expenses, always debit. So we're going to close it by crediting them, okay. So what are the expenses? We're going to credit our expenses. What's the wages expense? 400,000. <clears> and then we have rent expense was 75,000. Okay. Supplies expense, 16,000. And then miscellaneous expense, 5,000. Okay, so we're going to sum up everything here. So we sum up everything here and close it into income summary. Remember, expenses goes into income summary. So because we credited income summary, will be debited. Okay, now we are closing income summary or net income. Okay, so how would we do that? We have our income summary that we're going to debit it and then credit it into our capital. Remember, this is simply your net income, and net income always increases your capital. So it's going into your capital and your capital increases with credit account, okay? So what we do is we take our fees, this is how much our fees is, or we take it here is the same, minus <clears throat> our total expenses. Remember everything here gives us this, minus our total. So that is our net income and also closes our income summary. And then it goes into our capital, the, com the, the capital that increases the capital as well. Great, now we're going to close drawing. Drawing is always a debit account. So we're going to close it by crediting it. Okay, so we're going to credit drawing how much was drawing to 125,000. Whoosh, that's a lot. 125,000, and then we're going to do the same. And then that, what happens is <clears throat> that decreases the owner's capital because we know drawing decreases the owner's capital. So we have here, and then everything is the same on the left and also on the right, okay? So that's how we do closing entry. Always remember, read, 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 okay? Now we have adjusting entry here. This is the last one, and then we'll be done for the day. <clears throat> adjusting entry here. Let's see what we are trying to accomplish here. So we have this company and we need to do prepare adjusting entry for A, B, C, and D, okay, and E, okay. 
So I'll put it next to it so we can see side by side. So I already have my adjusting entry thing set up. And then for A, what are we doing? It says, <coughs> fees and button bill and where there's okay. So that means we end fees and we didn't bill. So we are going to make that entry. So if we end fees, fees is end and we are expecting to collect the money so account receivable. So we have here account receivable of 10,000. And then that will be the same for fees end. Okay. Now second one, supplies on hand on April where 81,500. Okay. So simply asking us how much supplies did we use? Okay, when the owner says supplies on hand. So, so that is, so how many supplies we do use will be a supplies expense and our supplies will be decreasing. Okay, so we take how many supplies we had from the beginning 21, 600 minus how much is remaining. That will give us how much we use, okay. So we have supplies expense here. And then what was the beginning one? 21, 60. Uh, right here minus what is remaining it <clears throat> 21 21 600 okay 21 600 minus the remaining one 8150 okay that gives us that so that is uh expenses that we use okay now let's go quickly to the third one c so depreciation equipment, okay? Once you know this, you know it's straightforward. It's a depreciation expense, and then the opposite one will go into accumulated depreciation for equipment. Okay, so we have our C here. Depreciation expense for 13,800, okay? And accumulated depreciation will be credited by that. Okay, now D, and the balance in on any fees represented, okay? the April one receiving advice. So the balance here fees uh, on end fees, where is on end fees? Okay, right here, this amount was how much we, we have received, okay? We have received money, but we haven't done the job yet, okay? So that's how much we owe to do a job. Okay, so we haven't earned this one yet, but it says, only 90,000 was provided. So we earned 19,000. So we are going to record 19,000. So we're going to reduce this by debiting 19,000 and then increase our fees and because we earn it by crediting 19,000. So that is our um, D for you, baby. So 19,000. Okay. And that will go, will go here. Okay. And then our E, unpaid wages are accrued, okay? So we owe wages that we haven't paid yet. But remember what we call the matching principle. We have to record it, okay? So we have to record expenses and then accrue it. So we have here our wages expense of 1170. And then we have the same here as 1170. So our wages that we owe increases and our expenses increases, okay? So if we do the total check quickly, we add everything on the left, and then we add everything on the right, and we see that we have the same numbers on left and right. Okay, good. So that is it for the day. There are so many ways of doing accounting, and whatever way you choose to do, keep practicing, and good luck on your test.